Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome to uh, our online worship service. St. Paul's is a people who believe that God's word is at the center and Jesus Christ is Lord. And he's our Lord, and we're preparing our hearts to worship him today. So thank you for joining us in that. And uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to ask you to, to join me as we pray and as we seek God to bless our time together today. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you for Thank you for online worship. God, we just pray that you would use it. You would use it to stir up our hearts to love Jesus. And God, we also pray that you would humble our hearts. Let us bow our knees today in worship to you. We want to exalt you. We want to lift you up, Lord God. And so I pray that you would bless us in that. Prepare our hearts. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And wherever we are right now, God, your spirit is there in your people, building us up, giving us freedom, giving us grace. So God, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we have a few announcements today, but we're going to wait till the end uh, to give you those announcements. Uh, one sneak peek, though, one of the announcements is going to be a, a fun Mother's Day craft that, that you and your children and, and, and everyone in your home can do together, and uh, you can celebrate your moms because it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to you moms, and uh, we're just excited to worship the Lord together. We're thankful to have a children's choir uh, to lead us in worship today. And we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. So let's lift God's name on high together.
it. It's time for the children's sermon. And uh, today, uh, I want to invite you to my nest. Uh, I'm sitting in a different place this week, and uh, today I'm sitting in my nest. Now, have you ever seen a little nest, uh, maybe with some little bird eggs in it? Or have you ever seen a mama bird taking care of her little baby birds? Well, all of that is done in a nest. So if you've ever seen a nest, that's the place where mama bird takes care of her little birds. And eventually what she wants them to do is learn how to fly and learn how to know how to go outside the nest. And as we're celebrating Mother's Day today, uh, we want to talk about uh, our nests as people. Now we don't have wooden nests or sticks, we have houses, but uh, the goal is kind of the same. Uh, what, what mothers want in their nests and in their house is that, that uh, you kids be trained up uh, to become adults because your moms love you and, and they want the very best for you. And they want you to, to be able to fly, to, to do really well in life. And the best thing that, that we can do in life is be faithful followers of Jesus. And that's what our moms want for us. They want us to be faithful followers of Jesus. So in your mom's nest or in your home, you might find the Word of God that they teach you and they read to you and they, they, they help you learn. You might find prayer, uh, praying together in your nest, all so that you can be trained to become a follower of Jesus. And that's Jesus' desire too. Just like your moms want you to, to come from them, to, to learn from them, to be in their nest and, and, and find rest there. Jesus wants the same thing for us. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Jesus said, come to me, you who are weary and, and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I long to gather my people as, as, a, as a hen, as a chicken gathers her chicks. That's Jesus' heart for us. And I think that's your mom's heart for you too. And so as we, as we are in our nest, as we're in our homes, especially right now since we're all kind of in our homes, uh, I want to encourage you, let your mamas bring you in. Let your mamas bring you into the nest and teach you about Jesus. Help you grow and, and, and allow them to, to wrap their arms around you and love you. And I would also encourage you, let Jesus do the same thing. Come to him and let him wrap his arms around you and be, be in his nest with him as he draws you in. Thanks for joining me in my nest. It was good to see you all and you have a great day. Bye kids. Please open your Bibles with me to Psalm chapter 16, verses 1 through 11. Psalm chapter 16, verses 1 through 11. Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good beside you. As for the saints who are in the earth, they are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another gods will be multiplied. I shall not pour out their drink offering of blood, nor will I take their names upon my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. Your su you support my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. The second scripture reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter verses 1 through 3. 
verses 1 through 3. What was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is God's word. We will now continue worshiping together, singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. you to lean with me on the everlasting arms as we continue together let's pray father god we acknowledge your everlasting arms we acknowledge that you are unchanging you are faithful and you're good and lord god we acknowledge your love today and we place ourselves in to your everlasting arms and we lean in we lean in close to you god and we worship you and we pray Lord God in Jesus name amen I'm thankful for the, the the message series that we began last Sunday as we are looking at the idea of being devoted and the idea of devotion for many of us thankfully, has started with our mothers. Our mothers were devoted to us in their wombs. As we were knit together by God's handiwork in our mother's wombs, our moms were devoted to us. They were devoted to our cellular development, if you will, as they nurtured us by just going through a healthy pattern of lifestyle while God knit us together. If it were not for my mom, I would not be here today. I would say that I celebrate each one of you moms, and I, I thank God for motherhood. I thank God for my mom. And I also thank God for my children's mom. And I say, Happy Mother's Day, Chrissy. I'm just thankful to each one of you moms out there, and Happy Mother's Day to you all. I'm thankful for your devotion to God and his devotion to you, and I thank you, moms, for your devotion to your children. Well, again, last week we began looking at Acts chapter 2, and I invite you to turn with me again as we are, again, looking at the sermon series that we have entitled Devoted. And if, as we turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we're going to read again, and they, are you with me? Acts chapter 2, verse 42 they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We talked about that last week. This week, 
Not only did they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, but also and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. The early Christian church was devoted. Jesus Christ, his ministry lasted three years. He died on the cross, was in the grave, and in hell for three days. And then God in his power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was raised from the dead. Then ministered again among the twelve. Some 500 people saw Jesus at one time. And then Jesus ascended into heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, we read in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was poured out as Jesus promised. And those early followers, with the Holy Spirit in them, they devoted themselves. They devoted themselves. Last week we began to look at this word devoted. And I want to look at that word and that idea of being devoted with you a little bit further. Here's some ideas for you to jot down that would help us kind of get around that definition. What does it mean to be devoted in 2020 as a Christian today? What does that word devoted mean for you and for me? It means to be earnest toward. In other words, devotion leads us to be earnest toward something in in the direction of coming closer To be devoted means to persevere. If you're devoted, you're you're not going to quit. Everyone knows that quitters quit. But those that are devoted persevere. They keep going. To be devoted means to be constantly diligent. To be in an ongoing fashion, diligent, hard at it. That's to be devoted. Another... Idea is to give oneself continuously to something. That's to be devoted. To give oneself continuously. To be devoted means to continue in. Just that same thing said again. And another idea of devotion is to wait on continually. The early church was devoted to fellowship. They were devoted, as we looked last week, to the apostles' teaching, and we broke down the apostles' teaching last week. You could look at last week's sermon if you missed it. It's online on our YouTube channel, and you can see it anytime you want. The idea of being devoted to fellowship, that's important, because if we look at the apostles' teaching, we're going to see from one book end of Jesus' ministry to the end of Jesus' ministry, from, as we looked at last week in our faith conversations, from Matthew 4, 19, where Jesus said, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, all the way to Acts 1, 8, where Jesus said, And my spirit will be poured out upon you in power, and you will be my witnesses. So come and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men, And my spirit is going to be poured out upon you and you will be my witnesses from one book end of Jesus' ministry to the other. All in between, in all of the apostles' teaching, we see fellowship. We'd like to unpack that a little bit and, and expose what is Christian fellowship? What does it mean to be devoted to fellowship? Very simply put, you can see Jesus Spending time, face time, face to face time with the believers. Face to face time with the early disciples and the early Christians. The early followers of Jesus. It's important to note that as we look at Acts chapter 2 verse 42. As Luke records the history of the activity or the acts of the apostles. As he writes Acts 2.42, he doesn't say that they devoted themselves to fellowship. But he clarifies he devo- they devoted themselves to the fellowship. There's a qualification. It's a, it's a qualified fellowship. There is a singular form of and a singular idea of Christian fellowship. In other words, our Christian fellowship starts with something essential, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. 
The qualifier of Christian fellowship is that Jesus is the Lord of that fellowship. And that's why every Sunday we talk about that we are a people. St. Paul's Lutheran Church is made up of a people where God's word is at the center and Jesus Christ is Lord. God's word is at the center of everything. And that would be a qualifier of the fellowship. God's word is at the center of our Christian fellowship. Jesus Christ is Lord of those that are part of the fellowship. And so we have a few questions this morning that I would like to look at with you. The first question is, again, looking a little bit more deeply, what is the fellowship? That idea of fellowship means to share together. If you look at the original language of the New Testament, Koine Greek, and you look at that word fellowship, it is koinonia. And that word koinonia means to share together. And so the early Christians, as they devoted themselves to the fellowship, they were sharing together. They were devoted to sharing together. And let me... Back up a step again. They devoted themselves to the sharing in together. And and as we clarify, what is that elementary reality? They were sharing together in Christ. The the, the people that gather here at St. Paul's, we share together in Jesus. And as I look at your faces on the plates, I love your smiles. I'm thankful to see your eyes and Just thankful to see you. And I I want you to know that we share in Jesus. That is the fellowship that is the hallmark, if you will, the foundation of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. It's the foundation of the Christian church of all ages. Jesus is the, the, the Lord of our fellowship. His word is at the center of our fellowship. In other words, as we talk about this idea of sharing in Jesus, it's kind of like being all on Christ's ship together. We're fellows on Christ's ship. As we fellowship, I'm not sure if you understood that. We're shipmates on Christ's ship. We're fellows together. And I'm playing on that word a little bit. But let me try to explain it this way. Just recently, I sent one of you a card in the mail. And the next time that person saw me, they gave me a big hug because he understood in that card the love of Jesus in my heart for him. And he returned that. We shared in that card and in that hug. And now every time we see each other eye to eye, face to face, there is a sharing in Christ Jesus. And I want to encourage each one of you believers, that's what we're sharing in right now. Yes, we're, we're, maybe there's a little bit of a difference as we're worshiping at home and we're looking forward to being face to face here quite soon where we can again fellowship, be all together on Christ's ship, shipmates sharing in the love of Jesus together. Again, we're, we're trying to talk about and look together at what is fellowship. And I want to go just one step deeper with you and invite you to turn with me to one of the scripture passages that our friend Jonathan read. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse, well, just part of verse 3. 1 John 1, part of verse 3. As John writes, he clarifies, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And so you and I, as we're following in the Apostles' teaching, we're devoted to the Apostles' teaching, what they've taught us is that as a church, as believers, our fellowship is not just with one another, but we are sharing in the triune God. Our fellowship is with God. It is with Jesus Christ. It is with the Holy Spirit. And we all are sharing in that. That makes up our fellowship. The major ingredient, again, to our fellowship is the personal relationship we have with God. And we share in that together. Some of you have been sharing meals with your family members. 
Some of you have been sharing meals with friends. You've been creative in this season. You've maybe had a, a FaceTime date night with another couple, a, if you will, a double date through FaceTime where each of you, each couple's eating, but in different places you're on FaceTime and you're trying, you're trying to share in a meal together separated by space. As Christians, there is absolutely nothing, there is no separation at all between us and one another because Jesus is what unites us. More about that in a couple minutes. More about that idea of nothing separating the body of Christ. Something essential is that our fellowship is based on, even as John writes in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, he is saying that indeed our fellowship is with the Father. That's a statement of faith. We believe that God, the Father, is a part of our fellowship. We believe by faith Christ, the Son, is a part of our fellowship, the center of it. By faith and by belief, it is in relationship that we're connected with one another, with the triune God. Here's a point, an important note to, to think about as you want to imagine with me and understand uh, a little bit more, kind of big picture thinking, how, uh, as we talk about what is fellowship, maybe an important part, how does someone get in? You know, as you think about a, a college or even a high school level basketball team, in order to make the team, you have to try out. You have to perform on the court. Not only do you have to go to the tryout, but the coach then reviews your play and he or she either decides you're on the team or not. And so you have to be able to get to that tryout. You have to perform and then you have to be invited onto the team by the coach. Here's the reality for us in the church. Everyone is welcomed in. John 3.16 clarifies. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes, whoever believes, whoever is presented with the good news of Jesus from the apostles' teaching, Whoever believes in Jesus, everyone is welcomed in. There's no tryout. There's no coach review. Well, you haven't really been to church recently. You, you haven't really, you know, studied your Bible recently. There's not that kind of review to be a part of the fellowship of the Christian church. Jesus Christ passed the test for you. He went to the tryout in, in, in Jerusalem. He, he stood before Pilate. He, he stood before the chief priests for you and for me. He went to that tryout. He was nailed to the cross for you and I. That was his fulfilled tryout for you to, if you will, make the team and be a part of the fellowship. Not only that, but he bled and he died on the cross. Even further than that, what allows you and I to be a part of the team of the church in the fellowship of Christianity is that Jesus paid for your sin debt and mine and removed it as far as the east is from the west. So far has Christ removed your transgressions from you so that you can be a part of the Christian church. You might argue that, that you, your, your sin is too great for God to forgive. And the Bible clarifies again and again and again that all of us have sinned. Romans 3, 23. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love to us in this. While we were still sinning, Christ died for us. 2 Corinthians 5.17. You can check that verse out. Very powerful. We've been given the ministry and the message of reconciliation. He who had no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. You and I are invited in. There's no more tryout for you or for me. Because Jesus rose from the grave and defeated your sin and mine. And today as we talk about being devoted to the fellowship, not just believing in the church, but being devoted continuously, persevering, continuing on and on as a Christian with the other believers. Overcoming the sin obstacles. As we're talking about all of this, this is a fruit 
of the resurrection. Our devotion to the fellowship is a, a fruit of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead at work in your life and mine. I want you to turn with me because we're, we're still looking at what is fellowship. And I want to read one verse out of Psalm 16, Psalm 16 verse 6. Psalm 16, verse 6 states, the boundary lines, I'm reading from the New International Version, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. The, the boundary lines for you and me as Christians is within the church. It's within the church. It's with Christ as Lord. It's, it's within the blessing of God. It's within forgiveness. It's within love. What a, what a beautiful reality is to, to, to try to define Christian fellowship. Better to live it. Better to be a part of it face to face. We're, we're looking at that in the weeks to come. Praying that God would give us grace to begin to meet together face to face. As we look at what is fellowship next, we want to look at how do we share in it. And I just want to list a few realities for you. And I want to invite you to, to study these further. One is to bear one another's burdens. We, we want to bear one another's burdens. That's how we share in fellowship. We, we come alongside of one another. Jesus, in fact, told us to cast all of our cares upon him for he cares for us. And yet we are also to bear one another's burdens. We're to confess our sins to one another. That is an important part of, of fellowship is, is being honest, truthful, in the middle of real life, confessing our sins to one another. We, we are to help each other. That's another way that, that we, we share in Christ together. We help each other. We forgive each other. That's another way that we share in Christ. Even as we have been forgiven, we forgive. That's a way that we share in Christian fellowship. We love each other. We allow the love of God, the love to overcome a multitude of sins. We love each other. And that doesn't stop. That's an enduring reality, loving one another. We stand together. We don't stand away from a, another Christian. We come close. We, we pursue. We persevere in relationship. We stand together. Another way that we share in it is we share as a part of the body of Christ. And finally, the last way that we share in the body of Christ, we are united with Christ Jesus, with the word of God in the center of everything that we're doing, and Jesus Christ is Lord. John Piper, a well-known preacher in Minneapolis, simply said in defining Christian fellowship, he said, we need each other. And oh, how that is true today. It's been true every day. It's always been true. When, when God made Adam, he said it is not good for man to be alone. And that applies to mankind today. It is not good for us to be at home on a stay-at-home order. It is not good for us to be quarantining. It is not good for us to be alone. I don't know what you think about this. But I know what I'm living and what my parents are living, my sister, my neighbors here in Gifford, my friends. We need each other. We need to be together. We need to love tangibly that we can, we can see it in each other's eyes. Oh, how we love one another because God loves us. Natasha Jenkins, I sat with her and Scott Jenkins this week, and Natasha said, just talking about this, this time apart, she said, uh, being with others helps me think about Jesus. In other words, just being with Christians help me, helps, Natasha said, it helps her think about Jesus in the right way. Just being alongside of another Christian helps me think the right way, helps me imagine and understand God the right way. And Scott Jenkins talked about how what we're all going through possibly is some sort of or some form of relational attrition where our just there, there's an atrophy, if you will, the muscle of our relationship is possibly declining. And I want to encourage you to exercise that muscle. Call your friends, call your family, call your mother. 
Exercise your relational muscles. Exercise your heart. Exercise your mind. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you with every relationship in your life. I think we all know what Christian fellowship looks like. It looks like being in Sunday school class. It looks like being in in Bible study. It looks like being in small group. It looks like being in prayer huddles. It, It looks like coming and receiving the body and the blood of Jesus together, confessing our sins unashamedly because we know that we're forgiven. Christian fellowship looks like singing and lifting our voices to God and praising his holy name. I'm so thankful that that part of Christian fellowship is gathering around the word of God and allowing God's word to be read and to, to, to affect us at the deep level. I'm so thankful for Christian fellowship. Someone might ask this question, who in the world do we not share Christian fellowship with? Who does a Christian not share fellowship with. Here's the reality. Christians, we share love and we share the gospel and we share good deeds and we benevolently give to anyone who has need. But our fellowship is restricted to those to whom, to those people where Jesus is Lord of their lives and the word of God is in the center. I want to say that again. Christian fellowship is exclusive, not by our design, but by the word of God's design. The teaching of the apostles, God Almighty's word, his word clarifies his ingredients for being a part of his family. And we as Christians have been grafted into the family of God. We've, brought into, we've been brought into the fellowship with God through Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death. And therefore, our fellowship is exclusive. In order to be in the church and a part of the Christian fellowship, a person needs to receive Jesus. And if you've received Jesus, then you're a part of the body of Christ all around the world. Wherever you go, wherever you are with a Christian, you have fellowship with Christ Jesus and with that individual. But a Christian does not have fellowship with a non-Christian because a non-Christian does not have fellowship with Christ. And that is very simple. It is very difficult. It causes me a little bit of friction inside of me because I want to be friends with everybody. But according to God's word, we are united with Christ. We are built upon Christ Jesus. And we have fellowship with him. And when he is Lord and his word is at the center, there is Christian fellowship. This whole conversation is great, but it is also a little bit surreal today as we talk about being devoted to something that we are currently not sharing in as a corporate congregation here in the sanctuary. We've not been in fellowship like we normally would be. And I'm tempted to believe that the church has been weakened because we've not been meeting together. We've been willing to follow the orders of our government. We've been willing to to restrain and to refrain from meeting together. However, I want you to hear me say this. The fellowship of the Christian church is not, nor will it ever be, weak. The the fellowship of the body of Christ is not, nor will it ever be, fragile. Because again, the fellowship of the Christian church is based upon the resurrected life of Jesus Christ in the church. And we are rooted in Christ Jesus. And the strength of the believer and the strength of the fellowship of the Christian church is based upon Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior who is within us. He who is within us is greater than he that is in the world. And we submit to Jesus Christ and to his lordship. And so the church, the body of Christ, remains victorious. Even as we have been home. Even as we will be together again very soon by the grace of God. We, Christians, are eternal. We have citizenship in heaven. We are not temporary. We are not 
fragile. As we look to heaven, we look at being with Jesus for eternity. We look at being with him and worshiping him and serving him and enjoying him for eternity. At this time, I want to invite you to sing the, the blessed song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Before we sing, would you pray with me? Gracious God, would you continue to bring us into fellowship? Oh God, would you continue to give us devoted hearts? Let us be devoted to you, Jesus. Devoted to your presence. Devoted to your bride, the church. Oh God, would you continue to give us an enduring faith, a persevering faith. Oh God, might it be that because of the fellowship of the church, the endurance, the perseverance, God, that many would be encouraged this day. Many would be encouraged as they watch the church enduring and persevering here in America and around the world. And at this time, we pray for the body of Christ in the United States and around the world. God, we pray for all Christians who are being persecuted. And we ask that you'd encourage each and every one. We acknowledge you, Jesus Christ, as our Lord. We thank you for your word at the center of our lives. Jesus, be praised. In the body of Christ, we pray. Amen. And with that in mind, let us sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's sing together. sweet to trust in Jesus. He is our Lord, and uh, since he is our Lord, we are devoted to fellowshipping together and gathering together around him and his word. And uh, I'm here in the fellowship hall right now, and uh, many of you are in your homes or, or with, with other people right now, fellowshipping together around God's word. And that's what we love, and that's what we want, and we're, we're hopeful in days to come that we'll be able to do that even more, devoting ourselves to fellowship. And so uh, be checking email and Facebook because uh, we would like to, to help facilitate uh, having communion uh, in groups, whether, uh, whether you make your own unleavened bread and have grape juice and wine, or uh, we also have kits here that we would like to provide. Uh, stay tuned on that and we'll, we'll give you updates uh, as we have them in regards to that. But we just want to continue fellowshipping together uh, around what, what Christ has given us. And um, 
Also, we have a Mother's Day craft that we would like to show you. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer real quick and she's going to demonstrate that for you. Hey everyone, first of all, I just wanna wish all the moms out there happy Mother's Day. Um, I have a really fun, simple little craft that you guys can do together as a family. Um, you know, gather everybody together, just have some fun with this and make it special. Um, all you really need is just a couple simple little things that hopefully you have at home. Um, maybe some acrylic paint, um, permanent markers, and any color paper that you have laying around will work just fine. So all I did was I just put a little acrylic paint on my hand with the tissue, just covered it pretty well. If you don't have any paint, don't wanna make a mess, don't worry, just use a marker, trace your hand. So I made my hand into a flower I put a little sun up in the corner and I simply said, mothers hold their children's hands for a short while, but their hearts forever. And you can put your name down in the corner in the year and it's something that'll last forever. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'm looking forward to maybe seeing some pictures of what you guys have done. Well, what a, what a great craft and what a great way to honor our mothers today for Mother's Day. And so I would encourage you in that. And uh, uh, before we go and before we do the benediction, uh, I have a song that I wanna sing to you. And it's a song that we can sing to each other because Jesus has brought us together to have fellowship with one another and to encourage each other. So here we go. Lean on me when you're not strong. Now be your friend. I'll help you carry on For it won't be long Till I'm gonna need Somebody to lean on And now, for our benediction, I want to read Romans 15, verse 5 for you. It says, Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another, according to Christ Jesus. That's fellowship. God empowers us to encourage and help one another persevere and we're together around Christ Jesus. That's what he calls us to. Thank you for joining us today and may God bless.